Hey, what's up guys? So for the final part of our BitAx setup series, let's go ahead and get into my favorite part. Let's get into overclocking the BitAx. Now, first off, what is overclocking in the first place? It's basically telling the BitAx, the miner, to work harder, to hash faster, to increase its hash rate, and make it more likely that it's gonna potentially solve a block. Now, to be fair, the chance that it does it is very minuscule, but it can be fun to play around with overclocking nonetheless. Now, when you're pushing these uh, harder than their rated levels, you can potentially damage something. And so definitely uh, proceed at your own risk, right? This video is for informational purposes only. Uh, you can damage the bit axe, you can damage the power supply. I've actually destroyed a, a power supply uh, overclocking. And so we'll talk about maybe some of the things you need to know and what you need to watch out for when you start pushing these. Now, as we get into the overclocking here and I show you exactly how to do it, uh, there's a couple parts that are gonna be stressed here on the bit axe. You've got uh, the ASIC, the chip that does the hashing. You've got some of the chips on the back, including the voltage regulator, and you've also got the power supply. Uh, now starting off, the uh, heat sink right here, uh, you can tell it's got a little fan on it, right? Usually most of them have a pretty small heat sink and fan. For that reason, a lot of people like to experiment with bigger cooling setups on top of their bit axes, and a lot of manufacturers even sell bit axes with larger heat sinks and fans. And you may want to consider upgrading to one of those if you want to push up your bit axe. Uh, additionally, on the back, you've got some components there that also can get really hot. Uh, for that reason, some people have been experimenting with even adding some heat sinks to some of the components back there. Uh, some manufacturers have started adding some fans to the back of the bit axe as well. And on the gammas, for example, they've added the ability to monitor the temperature of the voltage regulator back here as well, in addition to the ASIC under the main heat sink right there that's doing all of the hashing for you. Now, another important component to be aware of is actually the power supply. It's easy to overlook this and wind up actually destroying it. I've actually done that in the past, overclocking. Uh, now, these are typically rated for five volts and maybe like five amps, four, six, somewhere in that range, depending on which one you have. Uh, but that's usually maybe good enough for like just standard uh, clocking levels. This is a five amp power supply. So five volts times five amps is 25 watts. And we never wanna push this beyond 80% of its rated level. So 80% of 25 watts is gonna be 20 watts. But it is definitely possible to push your bit axe harder and draw more than 25 watts. And so for that reason, a power supply like this is not gonna be sufficient. And so you're gonna actually wanna upgrade the power supply. A lot of people have been liking the uh, Meanwell power supplies. There's a variety of different options and they support connectivity to a bunch of different bit axes. And so you can choose the one that works best for you. I'll link to a couple different versions down in the description. And you can also check out my video building power supplies like these. Then the cable coming out of the power supply, the thickness of this is important too. If it's too thin, at best, well, it'll kind of like starve the bit axe and it's never gonna be able to achieve 100% operation. At worst, the cable will actually overheat and could start a fire. And so for that reason, you're gonna to wanna to stick to at least 18 gauge wire. Uh, I've actually been running 16 gauge and 14 gauge uh, using the power supplies I've been building. And speaking of some aftermarket options, if you wanna push harder than the capabilities of what your fans are gonna allow you to do, there's a cool project that actually relies on oil immersion where uh, instead of relying on air cooling, you can actually dip this in oil and it's gonna allow you to push the limits far beyond what you can do with air cooling. And there's a project called Emerge Axe, which is allowing people to do just that. And for even more information about overclocking, definitely check out Andreas over on Twitter. Uh, he's got an awesome project going, basically Overclock Axe, where he's been doing a ton of experimentation uh, with overclocking the bit axes. And he's put together a, a really comprehensive article that goes over pretty much everything that you would need to know uh, to overclock your bit axe. Another good resource for you, which we're gonna go ahead and follow here in just a second, uh, is from, by my own two cents. This is basically a step-by-step -step guide, which is what we're gonna follow here, uh, as far as exactly how to overclock the bit axe. And so now that you've got the resources, let's go ahead and actually do it. And to start things off, we'll begin here by taking a look at a gamma that's just running with everything set to stock settings. You can see we're set to run right around one terahash, a little bit over. Uh, and then if we double check our different uh, settings, power is under 20 watts, uh, input voltage good at five volts. It's not dipping down like four nine, four eight or something. Uh, we've got our stock frequency and voltage. These are the settings that we're gonna be adjusting here in just a moment. Uh, and then as far as the temperatures, you can see we're nice down at 55. We wanna make sure that as we're pushing, we uh, don't go above 70. Uh, ideally, we're gonna wanna maybe like stick to 60 or so, but you can tell with this one, we're already kind of close, which is, because of the fact that it is only running with the stock fan. And so for that reason, if you wanna really get into overclocking, you're gonna want a, a beefier fan setup. And I do have a beefier one. And in fact, if you take a look at my gamma here that has the big beefy fan, this one's running at closer to two terahash, right? Double the stock frequency. And the temperature here on that ASIC board is at what, 60 degrees. So if you have good cooling, you've definitely got some room, but with the stock cooling, you're gonna be pretty limited here. 
Then coming back to the voltage regulator temperature, you can see it's a nice and cool 40 degrees. This can go all the way up to 100, so we got plenty of room here for the voltage regulator on the back. And I've got the fan set to 100% just because. Then to actually get into the overclocking, we're gonna go into the settings here, and then we're gonna scroll on down here to the frequency and the voltage option. And again, what we're gonna wanna do is slowly tick up uh, the frequency bit by bit. So you can see right now we're actually running at 1.07 terahashes per second. Uh, and if we go ahead and tick it up one notch, we're gonna go from 525 to 550. Uh, we're gonna hit save. Uh, it does say that you do need to restart the device, but I've noticed that with the latest firmwares, you don't actually need to do it when you're changing uh, some of the overclocking settings. And in fact, now when we go back to the dashboard here, you can see it's jumped to 1.12 terahashes, so it is starting to slowly raise up the frequency. Uh, and then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna start monitoring the voltage. You know, is our voltage still gonna be good here? Uh, is the temperature getting too high? Like, it'll start throwing warnings when it uh, gets, you know, overheated. Uh, is the voltage regulator starting to overheat? So we're gonna let it run here for five, 10, 15 minutes. Basically just make sure it's stable, make sure it's solid and it doesn't overheat. Uh, and then assuming everything is good, what we can do is we're just gonna go back over here and then we can try ticking it up again. We'll do maybe 575 and we'll hit save. And then we'll go back over here and we can see now we're at 1.17 terahash. So eventually at some point, a couple things are gonna happen. One, well, it may get too hot and it'll actually overheat. If it does, it'll actually display it uh, on the screen of the bit ax itself. And I actually intentionally uh, set one of my bit axes to overheat so that you can see. And as you can see right here uh, in the OS, it'll tell you that, hey, it's overheated. And if this happens, it's okay. It's a safety measure to make sure that you don't actually destroy the bit axe. And if this happens, you can just go into the settings. There's gonna be an option here to disable the overheat mode, and then you can put it back to, you know, whatever settings were still uh, safe. This is a super, by the way, not a gamma. So the settings are a little bit different. So we'll just set it back to stock here for now, and then I'll hit save. And then when we go back, uh, this Supra should go ahead and start running again. If in our testing we found that there was a certain group of settings where it was stable, we could of course just go back to those settings, whatever they were, and set it there and just leave it alone. Now, something else that could actually happen is that when it's trying to hash, you'll know that its expected hash rate is whatever it is here, and then the actual hash rate should be pretty close. It is gonna kind of fluctuate, you know, a little higher, a little, little lower, that's totally normal, but there's gonna be times where suddenly you go up by like one tick in the frequency, and your hash rate just plummets. It's going to like half the hash rate it's supposed to, so maybe it drops to like 500 giga hash or 600 giga hash when it's expected to be like close to 1.2. If that happens, you're running into a voltage limitation, and so in that case, you wanna go over here into the settings, and you're gonna to wanna to start to tick up the voltage by one notch. And when you do that, that should then give it more voltage. It's not gonna be as voltage starved and it's gonna allow it to start achieving the higher frequencies again. And so you're gonna be playing with these two options. You're gonna be slowly ticking up the frequency bit by bit, making sure that it doesn't overheat, making sure that everything is stable. If you notice that the uh, hash rate just suddenly plummets, that's your cue to maybe like tick up the, uh, uh, the voltage by one notch. And then the exact settings that are ultimately gonna work, you're gonna have to find that out on your own. I found that with my different bit axes, it varies from one bit axe to another just due to sample variation, due to ambient temperatures. I've got them in the garage and when it's colder out, then well, I can actually push them harder than in the summertime when it's warmer out. So you're gonna have to experiment yourself with your specific bit axes. Now you may find that depending on your cooling options, it's possible that you can actually get to the limits of what AxOS is gonna offer you. Maybe like, you know, 625 megahertz, for example, but you still have room to go. There is a way to actually go beyond those limits uh, and push them, but it's kind of a hidden option. It's an advanced option. It's not built in. So I'm gonna say do this at your own risk because if you're gonna be pushing kind of even beyond the limits uh, of what's built into the OS here, you can definitely destroy your bid X. So again, for informational purposes only, do this at your own risk, but here's how that works. Uh, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, open the Axe OS here in Chrome. Then once you do that, right click and go down to inspect. And then once you do that, it's gonna give you the option to go in and type whatever frequency you want. So if the max was 625 and you wanna run 650, 675, 700, you know, you can do that. Same thing here, you wanna to go to 12, 25, 12, 50, you've got the option to punch in whatever range that you want. Obviously don't go crazy and try to, you know, go straight to like 2000 Hertz or whatever. Like, yes, you can destroy your bit axe if you're trying to go do something crazy, right? So this is how you do it. It's gonna give you a little bit of extra room, but just make sure your cooling is on point so that you can do this safely and overclock without actually destroying your bit axe.
you can see for my Gamma, the one that I'm pushing the hardest because it's got that big heat sink on it. Uh, this one's going closer to two terahash. The settings on that, of course, are nice and high. If I go over to the settings for that bit axe, you can see it doesn't display the frequency and the voltage because I've gone past the limits for both of them here. Again, I've had to do this slowly and safely stepping it up. But if you take a look, uh, 625 is the maximum frequency, and then the maximum voltage for the gamma is 1250. If I right click and do the inspect trick here in Chrome, you can see I'm actually running at 950 for the frequency, and then at 1300 for the voltage. Again, make sure your cooling is nice and cool and effective and slowly work up if you're going to do this, but this is kind of an advanced trick for how you can actually push past, uh, past the limits, assuming that your cooling is going to let you do this safely and not actually destroy anything in the process. And so, yeah, for more information about all this stuff, again, you can check out this uh, excellent article here. You can join us on Twitter. There's a lot of great information about it, but uh, that's just kind of a walkthrough here as far as the general idea of overclocking and how you actually do it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you all have enjoyed this video series, and I'll see you in the next one.